Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video here. Today I'm going to be talking about this deck that I've been working on, and it is Blue White Control um, for the Pioneer Explorer format. So if you wanted to build this deck in real life, you could. Um, there'd be only one card that is not in Arena that you might potentially want to play, and I'll kind of talk about that. All right, so this is just a very, um, very basic Blue White Control deck um that i've been kind of playing through uh a bit of um or in platinum right now just to see how it does i haven't played pioneer in a while uh so there's a couple of new decks that uh, have come out that i've been kind of just test playing this deck against and see how that works and it's doing pretty well um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the card choices and then maybe break down the mana base and then we'll talk about the sideboard uh and yeah all right so uh, first off, we have our uh, Kahira Companion. We're not really playing any creatures, uh, so might as well have an extra card in our hand. Um, not much to really say about that. Um, so for our interaction, essentially, we're trying to keep it really low to the ground, as low as we can. Hence all the one mana and two mana interaction. Um, this should honestly be be, um, be over here. This is, this is the only like three mana card, um, three mana counter spell. And that we really play um, but yeah so a lot of interaction in the low end here and then we have a couple of bombs late game either board wipes or uh, or win condition we can either hard cast shark typhoon or just make a token and then just smack people with it um, teferi is also a pretty good closer uh, or at least stabilizer and then one emperor same thing helps you stabilize and close out the game with the uh, samurai tokens but yeah let's talk about the one mana slot first and then we'll go from there so portable hole um unfortunately we still don't have any really good one mana uh white spell removal card uh, if you play red you can probably play gavanic discharge or something like that um our other choices are um i think the one mana white spell enchantment that imprisons a card and a three um damage uh white spell that deals three damage when um two attacking creatures or blocking creatures uh portable hole here is just kind of like in the middle it's it just um very generic and it just kind of helps to beat those um really early game um cards um i have found that i it's sometimes kind of dead in my hand if i'm playing against a deck that is either like another control deck or is a combo deck or a deck that's just dropping late cards um in the game uh portable hole becomes very not that useful uh, but it's still one of the best um one mana removal that we have so we kind of just have to play with it um yeah next off we have one march and march is namely here just to be a one mana removal for any um man lands so man lands like anchorage um restless anchorage uh, the um den bug bearer any of that um, that we need to remove, um, this is good for that. It's instant speed, uh, unlike you know portable hole here. It can hit lands, it hits um, artifacts. It can hit um, enchantments. Well, it can't hit land, but it can hit lands once they're a creature. So yeah, just the one of right here. Um, not really much to say about that. Now most decks are playing one um, get lost, but I found that two is also fine here because sometimes there's um, no way to deal with planeswalkers in this particular deck so if you're playing against something like a narset or liliana or um you know, just any other uh planeswalkers white doesn't really have many good ways of dealing with that um our other option here is faithful absence but that's kind of an older card i think get lost here is really good uh, the only thing that get lost does kind of a bad job is it, is it does a really bad job at stabilizing you against very aggro deck so if you're playing against something like um, Mono Red Prowess um, or just a Mono Red Burn deck, Get Lost can sometimes backfire on you. Um, if they use it to buff their creatures, um, the map tokens, then you're going to be in um, a world of pain. So hopefully uh, you don't really need to use this against them. But I find that this is probably the best two mana um, removal for Planeswalkers, creatures, and occasionally um, enchantments. Uh, next off, we have Sensor. Uh, sensor here is just to up our counterspell count 
and basically just cycle when we don't need a counter spell or if we're just trying to look for a land so it's kind of dual purpose there in that sense we don't really need more than than two uh, maybe three copies at most but i think two is working out okay um then our hard counter is going to be the wind's veto um yeah still a really really good card in pioneer here um the next best counter spell we got is no more lies um, this is essentially like um mana drain oh well, sorry not mana drain mana uh i forgot the other um the other three mana counter spell or the uh, soft counter spell that that was two mana um anyways uh it, it kind of does the same thing it costs uh, it forces the opponent to play pay three or counter spell and then also exile it which is really good um and it's in our blue, blue white colors so um it, it's not really splashable in, in, in the any other particular deck other than blue white control um yeah all right and then we have our only three mana counter spell um we used to play absorb but absorb's kind of fallen out of favor it's kind of slow it doesn't really do all that much life gains most of the time not too relevant uh for three mana um three steps ahead it's kind of nice in the sense that it has different effects for different situations uh the, the one that i found that i use the most is the first and se um sorry first and third effect uh, the third um the second effect is not that handy the second effect is only really that great if you have like extra portable holes or you have sunfall tokens the incubator tokens um to copy uh or maybe you have a big shark uh creature or a um samurai that you want to create a copy of that um, but yeah, the second mold is pretty hard to use. We, we're not gonna really get any value out of it, so I um, never really casted it uh, for the second effect. I have used it for the third effect. If I'm flooding or if I'm uh, land a mana screwed, I will um, use the um, second effect to sorry third effect to uh, kind of dig through my deck to try to get lands or um, try to get some action. And then the first effect is obviously just a basic counter spell for three mana. Not that great, but it's nice to uh, have different modes. Uh, if you have a ton of mana, you can pour a bunch of mana into this. You can pour potentially five mana into it uh, most of the time. Um, you know, sometimes eight if you really, really just late game and you and your opponent are not doing anything. And then, yeah, you can definitely spend, uh, you know, close to eight mana to cast this card. But, yeah. Next off, we got Narset. Narset is just an overall pretty decent uh, Planeswalkers to slap down. There's a lot of decks that do draw. A lot of um, Is it decks, a lot of Phoenix decks. Um, even against our Mirror Match or against um, Mono Black uh, with Waste Knot. Just Narset, just overall powerhouse here. Um, she is a little harder to defend sometimes against aggro decks, but in general, I think she does a, a very um, good job um, at kind of hindering your opponent from playing um only problem is if you're playing as a combo deck uh casting her it can get a little risky sometimes uh if you cast her you find like your removal spell but if you're tapped out then you're gonna be in a world of hurt if they combo off on the turn that you are tapped out so just be careful about casting her so the one card that i did want to mention that it's not in arena that you may want to combo with her is days undoing um most people or some people play one copy of that in the deck so if you get to that point where you can days undoing with narset on the board um you know that's great if not uh if you really want to try it you can also do commit uh commit memory is also another pseudo days undoing just not as good it requires you to at least get it in the graveyard and spend six mana which can be kind of tough sometimes um i used to play one copy of it in the deck um i just found myself not really caring about the memory effect all that much um usually the game ends by then by the time i have enough mana to cast it for six um and have an set on the board uh, i'm usually just straight um like really really ahead at least with the, um days i'm doing it's only three mana so you don't have to commit all that much mana to it uh granted it's uh, a little worse in terms of it ends your turn but if you end your turn with open mana you should be okay all right, next off, we have our Planeswalkers here. We have uh, Wandering Emperors. Um, one of our form of only heals. Uh, so she does heal two if you use the uh, third effect. If not, you can just flood the board with a bunch of Samurai tokens. And uh, basically, that's your win condition there. Um, get out as many Samurai as you can. Uh, next off, Memory Deluge. Just another good um, draw spell. I prefer Deluge over... Um, 
time uh dig through time mainly because dig through time you do have to get your graveyard set up and it's not that easily um easily done in this particular deck because um you're a really reactive deck uh so you're really only putting cards into the graveyard when your opponent's putting cards into their graveyard or um when you're interacting with your opponent uh where i found memory deluge i'm able to cast this on turn four if my opponent is just passing draw passing draw passing they're not doing anything that i can just cast memory deluge uh get my lands get whatever i need um and uh, i have found myself casting this in the graveyard for flashback quite a few times uh so i do like that those effects a lot better than just um you know delusion for um two blue uh with um, dig through time but it's uh, it's probably player preference at that point. If you're playing a lot of cantrips, then maybe it's better to play the uh, dig through time. Um, but because I'm not really playing that that many cantrips, I'm not really um, getting dig through time off at a reasonable pace because uh, it does sit dead in your hand for quite a while. Uh, and by the time you are able to cast it for basically two two mana, you're either already winning or you're just really far behind. And whatever those two cards you are gonna get isn't going to really help you all that much i think where uh memory delusion mid game you can at least cast this and maybe get a card that you need uh to combat the um the opposing board and you can do it um before it's too late essentially next up we have our sweeper just uh verdict here uh our best four mana sweeper um then we have a five mana sweeper sunfall so it seems uh when i was looking up a couple of decks just to see what people are playing a lot of people are playing just two two and then the one of uh, and that seems to work out just fine. It's pretty, um, it's pretty comprehensive in terms of what it covers. Uh, Subfall is pretty relevant in terms of the ability to exile um, instead of just destroying the creatures. So if you exile something like a Grease Fang, um, or you exile um, any of the Milia combo or Angels, um, they don't get to produce the their tokens. They, get, they don't get to reanimate it later in the game. So Sunfall, the exile effect is really really nice. Um, then it also gives you a sort of a win condition. If you exile a ton of creatures, then you can potentially get a really big incubator. Um, and that sometimes is relevant. I haven't really found that to be the case all that much because most of the time my incubators may be like two to maybe two to four um, in t toughness and power. So it's not going to be winning the game outright. But uh, if you do use it, then um, it can help push for some damage. Next off, we got two to fairy here, just kind of like our late game um stabilizer uh, once you stabilize you get this guy on the board um he should be able to should be able to help you close out the game by just giving you enough card advantage and counter magic to uh, stop your opponent from doing anything eventually ulting with him will result in your opponent uh, potentially uh, more more or less scooping uh then one the one farewell here this is just basically your reset if if um you know things are going to, to hell you're like your opponent's got a million artifacts, creatures, and they have the graveyard set up. This one card here is just to like reset the game. Um, hopefully, you have enough life to um, capitalize off of it and mana. Uh, so yeah, just the one farewell here. And in Shark Typhoon, some people don't play this in the main. I've I've, I've always liked it in the main. Uh, if anything, uh, I found myself sometimes just hard casting it and then just going from there. Um, if not, I'm cycling this card to try to get lands, or I'm just using Shark uh, to basically be a blocker, be removal if my opponent is attacking with a, maybe a two uh, power, two toughest creature or something like that. I can Shark Typhoon in for four mana and then just block. And try to block with it. So Shark Typhoon, I, I like in the main. It's For me, it's either you play it in the main or you just don't bother with it at all. I, I'm just not too sure when you would side this in if you're just siding it. Um, but that's just me personally. All right. Uh, so next off, let's talk about the mana base. The mana base is the most tricky mana base I've uh, worked with in a while. Uh, I try to source through like different deck lists just just to see what people are playing. I kind of compiled one that I think works pretty decently for the most part. There are sometimes it's a little awkward if you're just drawing a bunch of white sources or drawing a bunch of blue sources you're not getting any of your dual lands and that gets a little weird sometimes. Um, with this mana base the, the most difficult card I found that's hard to cast is probably going to be Darset or Supreme Verdict sometimes, especially since we're playing a couple of colorless uh, mana sources. So just be aware, um, that's kind of like the risk you uh, have while playing this type of mana base. But I do think something like Field of Rune is kind of valuable, especially to deal with um, the um, Nick, um, Nykthos uh, and like the other crazy um, lands. 
Uh, so I think Field of Rune is kind of nice there. Or if they, you know, decide to animate a um, man, uh, sorry, man land, uh, that's a way to, for you to kind of combat man lands with the uh, Field of the Rune. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the mana base here, right? So we got Castle Arendelle. Um, not much to say about this. Um, problem with these Castle Arendelle and Castle Vantress is they require uh, a type land to be in play already. And that can sometimes be a little awkward. Sometimes I found myself most of the time actually just playing these tapped. Because uh, we don't really have that many um, um, land types, uh, land type lands in the deck. We really only just have Hall of Fountain and basically the basics to give us our, our typing. Uh, and most of the other lands don't have any typing, so um, the castle cards can sometimes come in and tap. Uh, but it's not it's too bad. Um, but I have um, used them, especially when I have a lot of extra mana. Um, I have had, have had made a bunch of tokens with the Arendelle or just go through my uh, top deck and scry a bunch and hopefully get something. Uh, one Eganjo, just basically a, a nice cycling land uh, to deal damage there. Uh, you could play something else instead of this. Uh, you can play, I think the other one's pretty good. The other white mana um, destroy enchantment card is pretty decent. Um, but you have to shock yourself for three or whatever. That's pretty decent. Um, same thing with Ottawara. You can play the, the three mana one that um, acts as kind of like a counter spell. That also works out pretty well. Um, so yeah, Ottawara and Ganjo are a little bit older. Um, but the Molo lands that uh, recently came out are maybe a little bit better. But at the same time, you're taking 3 damage. So I don't know how re relevant that is. Like I said, um, this deck doesn't have much healing without the Absorb. And so you taking damage from your land can kind of backfire sometimes. So I'd be careful about that. Uh, how much... Um, bolt lands you want to add to your deck essentially bolt and shock lands so yeah and then next off we have two hall of storm giants basically our late game win condition here uh, we do activate it to either block or just swing in for seven damage um there's an argument you can just play one you don't really have to play two uh i'm playing two for now just to see how it goes um yeah and then we have uh, deserted beach kind of our um mid game Land drop or early game if you don't have anything to play on turn one, you can always drop this first. Hollow Fountain is probably our best uh, land that we can uh, open up with. Um, Restless Anchorage is also a pretty good win condition and also a pretty decent trump blocker. Um, what I like about these particular um, lands or uh, these particular cards is that um, it works really well with Sunken Citadel. I'll get that there in a second here. Um, but yes, yeah, these uh, cards become a lot cheaper to activate and use when you have Sunken Citadel with you. Um, mentioned Field of Runes already, just good overall uh, land killing and um, sometimes color fixing for yourself if you're drawing too many blue sources or you're drawing too many white sources and you need one or the other. Uh, you can always just fill the rune and grab your blue source or uh, white source depending on what you need. Alright. Um, Gear Reach Reach um, Sanctarium here. This card is interesting in the sense that you really only ever use it when you have Narset on the board. Um, this plus Narset generally means you lock your opponent out of the game for the most part, especially if they're top decking. Um, they'll never be able to draw another card that's going to be usable unless that card has um, flashback or something like that because you'll force them to draw during their upkeep and then discard that card. Once it moves to their uh, draw phase, they can't draw another card. Uh, so that's what you typically want to do with um, Narset and the um, the Reach here. And then, as I mentioned, um, Citadel here makes it so that you activating any of these particular abilities um, a lot cheaper. So Field of the Runes just becomes tapping itself and a second Citadel. Uh, same thing with this, just tapping itself and a Citadel. So it's just two tap lands rather than the usual three. Uh, which is really nice. Like um, you don't really think about that until you use it. It's like, oh great, I, I still have enough mana open uh, to use regular interaction and still be able to activate my land abilities um, to also be uh, reactive. So yeah, so that's the mana base here. Um, Twenty six lands and then the rest of the cards, um, thirty four uh, castable spells. All right, let's talk about the side deck real quick here. Um, yeah, so divine smite. Uh, pretty good against 
uh, Planeswalkers, just kind of like how I have um, get lost here. Planeswalkers is just really hard to remove, so a majority of the good Planeswalkers are um, on the opposing side. They're going to be black, so you have Omniscious, you have uh, Liliana. Um, yeah, so for the most part, that's what Divine Smite is for. Or if you're playing against a mono black deck, uh, a lot of mono black um, um, decks will will have a lot of threats that you probably want to take care of too. Uh, so you can hit something like a um, Children, or if you're playing against combo deck, you hit Amelia. You can hit um, the uh, Grease Fang. So th that's what um, it's really nice about Divine Smite. It's also the fact that it's an instant and it exiles. Those are the two most key things that we really want out of our removal spell the ability to exile it so it doesn't get played again and the ability to basically um be at instant speed since a lot of decks nowadays um if you don't interact with them on their turn they'll just uh, win another card that you could potentially play is celestial purge or not, sorry um not celestial purge something um sorry royal decree or devout decree um this is another card hits red cards also the only issue with this card is that it is a um, sorcery speed. So, to me, I value the uh, ability to um, play at instant speed more than the ability to hit red uh, cards. Um, there are a bunch of red planeswalkers that are also pretty good in um, this format. So, if you're running to more of that, then maybe you want to play Devout Decree instead of um, Divine Smite. But in my experience so far, I think Divine Smite um, has worked out a little bit better. Um, then you have your Rest in Peace here. So I'm going to talk about this card a little bit here. Um, you don't have to technically play this card because it is um, easily removed nowadays. It's, it doesn't really just shut your opponent down. Uh, a better card to play actually is if you have a bunch of rare cards lying around. Um, I only have one copy right now, but it's this particular card. It's um, Kurt Z Zill? Cut Zill? flanker so this card is pretty good um it's got flash which is kind of like the neat thing about it um basically if your opponent's trying to revive or animate something do something crazy with their graveyard you flash this in you just exile their graveyard and this works under kahir which is really nice um if you have a bunch of creatures that died this turn if you board wipe um yourself uh, and your opponent you can also cast this on your turn and make it pretty big um or if you're playing against aggro you can always cast this to block and the um, heal two health um all the effects are pretty good uh for at least from what i've seen um i obviously only have one copy i think it gets better if you have more additional copies but yeah i think it's one of those cards that um pretty good in our control deck that you know works under kahira um next off we have sunset rivalry here um Sunset Rivalry, I think it's just an older card I had in the deck that I haven't really taken out. But you basically just use this against aggro decks. Um, it gets you more cards, gets you uh, blockers, heals you. keeps. It just basically helps you stabilize, essentially. I don't know how good that is nowadays. Uh, it could be honestly replaced with something else. I've seen other people play different um, cat cards. Um, I can't name them all because I don't think I have them. Uh, let's check real quick here. Uh, I've seen people play, not this one. Uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to look for it right now. Don't think I have it in my, uh, this one right here. Uh, Regal Carrera Cow, Carrera Cow. Um, so this is like a, just a late game drop that you drop and, um, basically help you stabilize. Uh, gives you a bunch of blockers and your other cats have lifelinks, so. Um, you could play this in, in place of Sunset Rivalry. I only like Sunset Rivalry a little bit better just because it can be played on as early as, you know, turn two if you needed to um, to try and stabilize. Uh, this is definitely a little more, more of a late game drop, so I'm not too sure how great that's going to be. And I think there's one more cat card that they do play. I, I'm not quite remembering what it is. I think it's a legendary, like cat or ferret or something was it beast i think yeah might be a legendary beast um but yeah just not kind of mid to late game drop though all right uh, let's move on i just got an additional portable hole here um in case i'm playing against 
really uh, low to the ground decks. It's just nice to be able to have as much interaction as possible. Uh, Soul Guy Lantern is supposed to be another one of the flankers, but I only have one flanker right now, so kind of, you know, forgive me on that one. Um, Aether Gust, I'm, I still really like that too. It's also another way to interact with red and green um, permanent, so uh, that's why I'm okay with Divine Smite just hitting black. Um, so you have some red and green hate here. Uh, Narcissus Reversal. Um, this is namely only used against maybe uh, mono black um, discard. Uh, if they have like the uncountable discard your whole hand, uh, you can use this. Or they have any um, targeting card that forces you to discard, you just use this, force them to discard instead. So they spend three mana to discard two cards. Uh, I'd say this is a pretty good card against that. Um, so yeah. And then finally, we just have disputes here just for some additional blue hate. But yeah, so the, the sideboard is just mainly just hate uh, against specific colors or specific strategies, anything that's graveyard. Um, the one thing I do like about Rest in Peace, though, it's good against um, uh, Rakdos Sacrifice, uh, which I don't think uh, Flanker is all that great against, uh, namely because you can get rid of Cat um, cat Familiar, the, the Familiar Cauldron Cat uh, permanently, um, rather than uh, Flanker, because if you try to exile the graveyard while they have a cat, they can always sack a food and, at instant speed and bring back the cat, so... Um, this doesn't particularly solve the issue with dealing with the uh, familiar, whereas um, rest in rest in peace just does that. Granted, rest in peace um, they can actually destroy or remove, so just be careful about it. And the problem with rest in peace is that if you draw multiple copies, it's not that great. Hence, why we only play two. Uh, the flanker is great in the sense that if you draw multiple copies of the flanker, you can always just play as a three-one body and go to town with it. Um, or if you have Kahira on the board, it becomes a 4-2, which is really nice. Or if you lost a bunch of creature and you cast it for the first um, ability, then you could have a pretty big, uh, pretty big flanker um, just to go for, um, just to close out the game. Because I've seen people either play two or three or maybe even four copies of the flanker in the cyborg. Um, but for now, I think two copies is good. I'm trying to keep my cyborg pretty open and generic, uh, hence why um, I chose to play just the, the two for now. All right, guys, um, that's really it. Um, there's a couple of maybe cards you can change out in the mana base to make it to your uh, to more of your liking. Um, because I'm playing so many tap lands and um, colorless lands, uh, I'm not playing anything like Meticulous Archives or the Henge or anything like that. Because um, I kind of want um, don't want too many tap lands for one. And the archives is not that great in this particular deck because we're not really using our graveyard, so we don't really want to be surveilling, um, seeing our th our threats, and then sending it to the graveyard because that doesn't really do much for us. Um, so like if you do meticulous archive and you see like an R set or you see like your one of spells and you send it to the grave, there's unlikely any chance of you being able to recover it from the graveyard um, to make use of for it later. So hence why we're not really playing the many. Uh, the meticulous archive i'm not saying it's a bad card i'm just saying i don't think it's super necessary in this deck and we want to keep the amount of tap land a little bit low because uh, for our tap lands we basically have four uh, we have the two citadels and the two restless and then this can potentially come in um, come in tap or the castles can also come in tap if you don't have the the right um land typings all right guys that's basically it it's been a pretty long video but hopefully this is kind of a, a decent um look into how to build your particular blue white control deck or just give you an idea of how to build and play it a um, couple of choices you can definitely um, change shark typhoon for example or the um, your suite of early removal uh, can be changed a little bit depending on your prep um, personal preference or you, you can even take out narset if you don't like narset uh, she can be a little slow uh, but she can also be um, game breaking if your opponent really requires uh, a bunch of draw cards but yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully this uh, helps you out, and if it does, just let me know. And uh, yeah, have a good one.